Ice Crown Citadel is right around the corner for Wrath of the Lich King, being the final raid for that expansion. WoW Classic does have the hardcore scene right now, and there's some amazing huge tournaments going on there. But what about the future of the game? What about the unanswered questions that we have, not only for Wrath of the Lich King, for the raid that's about to come out, but also things like Hardcore Realms or Classic Era? Any sort of timeline for when we're going to find out what's coming next in World of Warcraft? And we definitely heard that today. We do find out that there's definitely things gonna be coming for World of Warcraft. And it's crazy how soon we're actually gonna be able to play and test some of these new versions or whatever is the future. So today, Crix and I sat down with two of the devs from the World of Warcraft Classic team, working on all versions of the game, and asked them all the questions that we could in the timeline, mostly pertaining towards WoW Wrath of the Lich King, but we do touch on every version of the game and the future of the game. So sit back and enjoy Enjoy, and I'll let both of the devs introduce themselves right now. We do have a lot on our plates uh, uh, in terms of uh, what, what we're doing at Classic, so I'd be I'd be surprised um, if there if there wasn't anything pertaining to Classic at BlizzCon. So it is likely that that we could move something like this into the future. It's always a great debate, and and ideally we come out with what we think is going to be the best decision for players. And you know, we're not always right. Hey everyone, I'm Tim Jones. I'm the assistant lead game designer on the Classic World of Warcraft team. Or can everything on Classic. <laughs> we're sort of generalists, so we got our hands in hardcore on 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 Wrath, on seasonal content. So we uh, got our little bit of everything. It's so exciting because you guys literally work on all versions of Classic, which is going to be hype. Dara, can you introduce yourself? Welcome. Of course. Hi, uh, my name is Dara Diva. I'm a technical designer on the Classic team as well. And just like Tim said, uh, my hands are in all of the pots as well, just trying to help out and push uh, all of our features forward. Hey guys, how you doing? So the first one is uh, the recent Feral Druid nerf of 5% damage shocks the community. And we wanted to get some clarity on the thought process behind making those changes, but more importantly, also they were reverted. So kind of like, what was your thoughts going into changing it and then reverting it? I see what you did there. You said clarity. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, when we first implemented the, the Omen of Clarity glyph, um, the primary motivation behind that glyph was to, you know, smooth out the feral rotation um, remove the complexity and the need to to bear weave in order to play optimally. You know, we knew that it would increase performance of this of the spec on the class, um, particularly on the top end. But we we also knew that in the final phase, ferals start to scale particularly well. So you know, we were somewhat concerned about their damage, and the damage reduction was something we wanted to test. Um, but ultimately, we decided not to move forward with it for a variety of reasons. Um, the, the primary of which was that we weren't super concerned about ferals being stacked for progression rating in the same way that DKs, mages, and warlocks might be. So we simply realized that a, a nerf like this probably wasn't, um, going to be needed, even if with the best possible gear, ferals may be, um, top or very near top DPS. We're also going to keep an eye on this stuff. Um, we don't really want to make adjustments unless something... Uh, leads to a significant outlier or just really mm -hmm. clunky gameplay. Um, but in retrospect, we probably should have considered this a bit more before sending the change out. Um, but again, this is also why we prefer to do these things on the PTR first, so we have a bit more time to consider something before committing to the change. Being aware that you guys are looking at class balance as well as like how things are affecting the game is, I think, a good thing for everyone to know moving forward. So you're kind of like paying attention in case something is broken. That kind of leads me to my next question, which is there is a strategy within the Heroic Lich King encounter to basically stack mages permanently. And you can run like 19 mages because they have enough range to actually hit the boss when he's phased doing the remorseless winter phase. So it saves about seven minutes on that fight alone, which would mean that all speed runs at the end of the phase have to be fully mages. Do you have any intent at looking at this and, or have you already looked at this and how it's gonna affect the gameplay or the player experience? Yeah, I, I can jump on this one. So we don't have any plans right now to adjust mechanics to to try to, to fight or avoid these sorts of niche raid comps. I mm -hmm. think speed running groups are gonna do what speed running groups do 
to get through the content as quick as possible. And, and for us, I think we're mo more focused on, you know, what is the overall experience for not just those groups, but for everyone uh, going through the content. And so as of right now, we don't make uh, or we don't have any plans to make any changes to to address that. I mean, to keep to keep the fight as as authentic, and we're you know we're not building a pre nerf version of the encounter. Mm -hmm. We're fixing exploit cases w where they pop up, such as you know people dying to get out of the Frostmourne phase <laughs> in order to DPS. Like that that is obviously a bug that probably would have been fixed if people were doing that when the fight originally came out. So we are keen to fix the fight in those cases however like to to mechanically read a lot of the fight would have to be redesigned in order to make sure that remorseless winner works in these edge cases where you have however many mages in the best gear with the 30 percent buff and that's going to take some time to get to that that point of time that's not going to be a situation that everyone's going to be in yeah and so we have to weigh the the pros and cons of the amount of effort, the risks involved. Making small adjustments can have a butterfly effect of of creating unforeseen problems. So we're trying to keep the fight in in the the most original form as as possible. So we will like if if it feels like we're literally binding people's hands to to play 18 mages in every single comp of every single ICC run, then yes, we may look at solutions to that. Um, but <laughs> I think oh, hello, the situation ladies. might be a little, little bit uh, overblown <laughs> in terms of what we're forcing all groups to do. Like Dara said, speedrunners are going to be doing a very specific thing. Um, I don't think that that's going to be, I, <laughs> I don't think that that's going to be the situation that most guilds, <laughs> are going to feel like necessary they have to do or even mm -hmm. can do because not not every guild has access to 18 mages so yeah and we'll 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 have to wait and see thank you thank you for that answer so it kind of goes with the next one where you guys have changed red a little bit throughout the expansion and then hunters just got trap launcher can we expect any more tuning from anything else this is this late into the expansion so as, as of right now uh we don't have anything slated uh for 343 per se but but that being said like we're we're definitely still like we've been saying uh taking into account and looking for any serious outliers like if there's any class that really has no representation uh throughout this phase and we start seeing that early we'll definitely look at ways that we could adjust but right now nothing's nothing's been slated i, I just i caught you say for 343 i was like ooh, um I'll just we'll talk we'll ask that later but that that's great that's good to know that everything is looking like it's in its final iteration or I mean this was our final version of PTR before we really move into the last phase which is happening in a couple of days with that there's a couple of things that are left within Wrath of the Lich King there's a little bit of content left and one of those even in this phase alone is that in the past, we eventually received a 5% all the way up to 30% damage, healing, and HP buff throughout the entire raid. So is there a plan to implement this, or are you planning to leave the raid as, as hard as it is right now? Um, and when should players be able to relatively expect something like that? So we'll, we'll definitely be adding this buff. Um, but mm -hmm. we also, you know, we've we've learned lessons from releasing content or nerfing content too too fast, like with the tier five content. I think we we went to the the post nerf versions of of Kalthos and and Vosh maybe a little too fast. There were some people who were still working progression on on that, and and they felt like, you know, they were they were robbed of being able to. Um, get their kill on those those pre nerf versions of the bosses. Um, now it's a little different because you can still turn. Th this is an opt out of buff. Like once it's turned on, people will be able to talk to um, an NPC inside the raid and turn the buff off if they really want to. Still try to kill um, Lich King with zero percent. All of that said, we we want there to be a healthy period of time where there is no buff at all. Um, It'll probably not be longer than two months or eight weeks. Mm -hmm. um, it could come a little bit sooner, depending on what progression looks like for the majority of guilds. 
Um, but I'd say somewhere around that time period is when you can expect the 5% um, buff to pop up. And then um, every every few weeks uh, after that, we'll 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 get an increase to to that maximum buff that players can um, can have. That brings me to the question, just specifically for both of you, what do you think you're gonna what What do you expect to happen on launch day? Do you think that guilds will clear the raid all the way um, with heroic lich king being as hard as he is, especially with getting rid of on the last day of PTR the the exploit where you would just unalive themselves and then resurrect to be able to do extra DPS. Do you think people will clear it? And like, how long do you think it'll be until you see like many groups clearing? I, I can throw my hat in first. Uh, and hopefully I'm not like wholly uh, overestimating our players, but I, I do think the like ultra fast, ultra sweaty guilds, I would still expect to probably uh, clear within the first day. Mm -hmm. I originally threw three hours out there. I don't know if that's being too, uh, again, just just making it too fast. Like maybe maybe it's not going to be uh, that short of time. But I think mm -hmm. outside of like the one day clears or first day clears for those sweaty guilds, I, I do think the more casual, more dad style guilds probably wouldn't clear for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, I would expect quite a few guilds to start clearing as we start rolling in the zone wide buffs. But yeah, I, I think. Day one for ultras, and then maybe two to three weeks for like one tier below of raid groups. Three hours is great. I, I like that. I like that, Tim. Because I we have the race world first this week. So Tim, what do you got? I I just I've something that I've learned in my time here is just to never never underestimate players. I think Lich King's mm -hmm. gonna be hard, and there have been some mechanics that we've made us slightly more difficult, but mm -hmm. life finds a way. And uh, I, I think Lich King is going to die day one. I'll be surprised if he doesn't. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I don't really have any specific guesses for the amount of time that it'll take. I hope it happens because uh, at, at work we're we're having a an ice cream party watching uh, <laughs> yes. watching the kills um, do the world first clear. So we're we're all excited. We're going to be uh, cheering. Um, and fixing anything, if uh, hope, hopefully not. Yeah, that's true. Hopefully, it's all just clean. The we had a, a lot of PTR. Ice cream down if I need to, but uh, no, we we think it's going to be uh, a clean run. We're super excited to watch. I think I'm the only one who doesn't want anybody to clear it day one. <laughs> I'm gonna see everybody just chain wipe. I'm gonna see. Yeah. A I want to see a retail type prog on IC on uh, Lich King. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Down to the um, wire, one attempt left. Yeah. <laughs> So we're finally getting random dungeon finder, but it's mm -hmm. almost the end of the expansion. What was the catalyst from going from like a no changes standpoint to now attempting to enhance the gameplay? As with all things, times change, opinions change, design philosophies change. And um, even on the classic team, there, there were people who had different opinions on whether RDF should go out at the beginning of wrath or towards the end of wrath. And um, it's, it's always a great debate and, and ideally we come out with what we think is going to be the best decision for players. Um, and, you know, we're not always right um, on, on those decisions, but, you know, a, as we continue to evaluate where the game needs to be and what features need to come out on, on a patch by patch basis, you know, we, we felt that now was, was, the best time for RDF to come out um, in the final patch. This is where RDF came out originally in Wrath. Even before this, even without RDF, we, we had other ideas to keep dungeons fresh with Titan Rune dungeons. That's also been really successful. You know, I think what ultimately swayed us into being sure that we were um, shipping RDF with this with this patch was um, low level dungeons. It's it's really difficult, and we acknowledge that it's difficult to get low-level dungeon groups um, in the old world this late into the expansion. Um, feels like a really good time for both higher-level groups and lower-level groups to have access to RDF, and uh, especially with Joyous Journeys coming back. Um, yes. This felt like a just the perfect time to, um, to help people get into groups this way. Yeah, I love the Titan Rune Dungeons. Speaking of those, the Defense Protocol Gamma Dungeons are possibly the best catching mechanic like, ever for alts. That's like brilliant. Uh, does that change in core aspects of the game reflect the standpoint that you guys have in the future of WoW Classic, whatever comes next? You know, I think 
just speaking to to Titan Rune Dungeons, it it was something that's kind of evolved in its lifespan. Uh, it it originally started to to try to breathe life into the dungeons that you know an original Wrath you kind of just ran mindlessly, and then at some point they just dropped off. And as we built from alpha to beta, beta to gamma, uh, the philosophies changed a bit. It's still very successful in terms of, of breathing life into the dungeons, but now it's, like you said, it's become an awesome way to catch people up, also to round out uh, your, even your main characters for, for things that maybe you just didn't get you know, lucky on when you rolled the dice. And so when, when we look ahead, we, we don't have any set plans just yet. And I feel like I'm saying that quite a bit with some of these questions, but I do think the the success and the enjoyment that we're seeing around this specific system, it it isn't or it is likely that that we could move something like this into the future. We just don't have any set plans of what that would look like. That brings life into you guys are doing a really good job of making it more accessible for some people to get some items that just it isn't your fault to not get so having this option to get something like a comet's trail i think helps everybody so many people are excited about that but that philosophy also kind of steps over into shadow Morn. you guys also made it so that shadow Morn is a lot more accessible i think it takes about five to six weeks on average for everyone to get them and you don't even need to down all of the heroic bosses to now be able to acquire shadow Morn. so i'm just curious what the thought process was behind deciding to help people get Shadow Morn? Was it like, now it's the end of the expansion, make everybody happy? Or, because usually legendaries beforehand were were really, really exclusive. This is gonna be a lot easier to get. So what were the thoughts between changing the Shadow Morn quest? You're absolutely, I mean, we can't, we're not gonna give Shadow Morn to everyone. There's still a, yeah. a big quest line. Four to, four to six weeks is still a hefty amount of time to, to put, um, to put into getting one of these, but you, you know, you mm. hit the nail on the head. Um, if you just look at Sunwell, uh, there's a few people who get Thor at all. Granted, there's not a big quest line. It's just a rare drop from kill Jaden, but like how much time did those people have to actually use that weapon um, in the raid um, and have fun with it? And, you know, we just want to err on the side of a fun, letting a few more folks on your raid team have this before the end of wrath classic. It feels great to us. Also, you know, the original Ice Crown Citadel raid tier lasted 11 months, and not even all of the heroic content was available at the beginning of that. Um, and so a lot of the design and, and the tempo of, of getting Shadow Morn was reflective of how long that period was. So while we intend to give ICC in Wrath Classic a good long run, mm -hmm. it's not, it's not going to be 11 months. So... Um, we want the amount of time to get Shadow Morn now to reflect that that um, that change as well. I was one of those people that got Thor all like a week before the end, and it's like you're so excited, but then you don't get to use it. And like a week later, you're like, oh, well, that was fun. Great leveling bow, right? Yeah. yeah, but then you got the new like arrows, which are stronger yeah. anyways. Oh. Well, I, I love the design philosophy of thinking about like fun, right? Like maximizing fun and enjoyment in the game. And I think everyone that plays is just like loving that. It's kind of translated to every version of World of Warcraft. So with Hardcore Classic, Classic Era and Wrath Classic and a second season in the works, what's the most exciting thing that you can't wait for the community to see and to get to experience? This is sort of a cop out answer, but hope to see you all at BlizzCon. <laughs> oh yes, I love that. That's a great answer. You definitely will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, there's going to be a lot of of awesome, you know, announcements and demos at BlizzCon. We can't really talk about anything specific. Um, we want everyone to to enjoy um, just the, the surprise of of uh, everything, as you know, as we discover things together. So, looking forward to. To BlizzCon. So there's no way to poke you about uh, asking about Cataclysm Classic or any plans towards that? Can't, can't talk about anything <laughs> that hasn't been announced yet. Sorry, bud. <laughs> so, so basically what you're saying is everybody watch out for BlizzCon. We'll hear about the future question mark of the three versions four with Hardcore, I guess, of the game. Oh my gosh. We do have a lot of, on our plates uh, uh, in terms of uh, what, what we're doing at Classic. So I'd be, I'd be surprised um if there if there wasn't anything pertaining to classic at blizzcon so 
uh, there's, there will definitely be stuff uh, – from the classic team to to talk about in, in to less than a less than a month. <laughs> so yeah, we're, we're we, don't very, have, we don't have to wait very long, do we? Yeah, we're very excited. It's our mm-hmm. first time going, so oh, it's exciting. It'll be See fun. You guys there. Super cool. Yeah. yeah. Every time talking to you, especially Tim, you're always like so passionate about this game, and I love it, especially WoW Classic. So, could either of you, starting with Tim, and what what's your like favorite boss encounter or your favorite, maybe even memory? of classic WoW that you've worked on or even experienced yourself? My, just from the whole of... <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. I, I wanted to dig deep. I, I can't pick out something specific, but it is it is trippy because I've, I've been at the company for uh, a bit over 15 years now. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm sitting in the same building on the same floor in roughly the same office space that I was when I was... Uh, a QA analyst working on testing like Ice Crown Citadel. So that that's just trippy in and of itself. I have screenshots of bugs I entered on the Ice Crown gunship battle like <laughs> all that all those years ago. Um, you know, so it's just it's fun. It's it's a trip down memory lane. It's so exciting to to just work on this content again and see people just super excited about it all over again. That's actually so epic. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was a great answer and definitely stole the thunder. Uh, I'm trying to think for, for, for myself. I mean, I, I've been a lifelong uh, WoW player. And so mm. now getting to to see like behind the curtains and get to see kind of how how the magic gets made has been really exciting. Um, it, it's also really, really fun to see. I mean, like Tim just said, like seeing some of our teammates look at bugs that they may have implemented or unintentionally implemented you know, 10 plus years ago, and then coming back to him being like, hey, like I, I wrote that. I know how to fix that 10 years later. Um, and it's just been, it's been fun. It's the, the team is, is honestly just great to work with. And, and I wake up every day, super excited to get to work with all of them. And that's been the, the, I think the thing that's been the most fun for me. Um, but yeah, and, and funny enough, we're in the same building that I also started in seven years ago. So I, <laughs> We like moved around. I moved to like three or four different buildings, and then ended up back on, uh, back in the building that we're in, and on the classic team, which is yeah, full circle right there. Cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And there you have it, guys. Thanks for watching. I did cut a few things from the interview, and if you want to hear the full entire interview, you can find it over on Spotify or any sort of podcast website. Also, everybody, good luck in Ice Crown Citadel, and I hope to see you all out at BlizzCon. If you do see me there, definitely come say hi. Let's take a picture together. Also, one more time, thank you to Blizzard. Thank you to Tim and Dara for taking the time to speak with me and Crix today. And from there, guys, I'm really excited to share the future of the game with you when we get to test it and when it gets announced pretty much at BlizzCon. So we'll find out in a couple weeks. Anyways, good luck in ICC. Good luck on Hardcore. And I'll see you all on the next one.